Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In today's video, we're actually going to be discussing a theory within the greater wizarding world. That is to say, today, we'll be going for a deep dive into the latest trailer from the upcoming Fantastic Beasts The Secrets of Dumbledore film, which was released a few weeks back in December. Like many teasers and trailers, from a short 3 minute compilation of clips from the movie, there is much to unpack despite its length, which is why, in this video, I've decided to focus on one particular part of the trailer. Why in the name of Merlin's beard does Jacob have a wand? Let's start off with a bit of background. For those of you who may not know, the Jacob I'm referring to here is Jacob Kowalski, an American muggle, or no man if you're stateside, who was introduced in the first Fantastic Beast film and who has remained a main character throughout these subsequent sequels. In the first installment, Jacob is befriended by Newt's commander, a quirky magizoologist and the future author of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, and taken on the magical adventure of a lifetime. In their travels, Jacob is introduced to Queenie Goldstein, a witch and gifted Legilimens. Being a Legilimens, she is able to read people, hearing their thoughts and feeling their emotions, in Queenie's case, without even trying. Jacob and Queenie quickly become interested in one another and despite Jacob's memories being wiped at the end of the last film, by the second movie, the two have been reunited and are, at the very least, dating. I say at the very least, as when we first see the pair in the Crumbs of Grindelwald film, Queenie claims that the two are engaged to be married. However, Newt soon uncovers that Queenie has enchanted Jacob in order to get them down the aisle. You see, although Jacob loves Queenie very much, he is unwilling to marry her, for in doing so, she would have been imprisoned as marrying a nomad was illegal in the United States at the time. Unfortunately for these two lovebirds, after Newt lifts the enchantment, Jacob and Queenie get into a fight. Queenie disapparates to Paris to find her sister Tina. Newt and Jacob, after finding a postcard Tina had sent Queenie from Paris, head to France in pursuit of the two sisters. Of course, there are a few other reasons that the pair head to Paris, but those details will have to wait for another video. Quite a bit transpires in Paris, but for this theory, all we need to mention is that at the end of the film, Queenie is lured into becoming a follower of Grindelwald, seduced by the promise of being able to love and marry whomever she chooses, such as a nomad like Jacob. Of course, this is terribly misguided, as Grindelwald is infamous for his anti-muggle sentiments and beliefs that muggles are beneath wizarding kind, but apparently, Queenie doesn't view it this way. Which brings us to the upcoming Secrets of Dumbledore film. In the trailer, Queenie looks to be quite comfortable, and might I add powerful, in the service of Gellert Grindelwald, and Jacob, intent on getting her back, and still in the company of Newt, is given a wand by Dumbledore by way of Mr. Scamander. This brings us to the question, why give Jacob a wand, and who on earth does it belong to? Here are a few theories I've come up with so far. Theory 1. The wand is real and Jacob has some magical qualities. As there are varying levels of magic present in every witch or wizard, could it be possible that Dumbledore has sensed that Jacob possesses a small amount of magical power? With this wand, suppose he could learn to channel minor magic and use it for simple spells, such as Hagrid did with his umbrella in Harry Potter. These would be spells that he could use to protect himself and his friends in times of dire need. There's also the possibility that, even with no magical power, Dumbledore thought it safer to give Jacob a functioning wand that could expel chaotic magic in desperate times, because a real wand, even when used by a muggle, always produces magic, just not always with the desired effects. This theory is supported by the quick glimpse we get in the trailer of Jacob looking like he's attempting to use the wand in an encounter with Queenie. Theory 2. The wand is nothing more than a prop used to disguise Jacob as a wizard, as it's been well established that Jacob is in fact a nomad throughout the previous films, it's quite unlikely that he possesses any magical talent, so perhaps he's been given a fake wand just to help him blend in within the wizarding world. After all, in the trailer, we see Jacob in a few different magical settings, including Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. That way, if he were to encounter a bad lot of witches or wizards, say Grindelwald's acolytes, he could at least feign that he was a wizard maybe even pretend to be one who supported Grindelwald, and escape the meeting unscathed, because without a wand, he would likely just be a sitting duck, 
No wand, no magic, no madge, no chance. Theory 3. The wand is real and can be used by the others if they are disarmed. Perhaps Newton and Dumbledore have given Jacob a proper, functioning wand in the event that they get taken by a group of Grindelwald's followers. In this scenario, the assumption would be that the Acolytes, being quite powerful witches and wizards in their own right, would be able to tell that Jacob is a muggle, and so they would disarm Newt and the other wizards, but they wouldn't think to check Jacob for a wand. After all, why would a muggle be carrying one? So now Newt and the others would have a wand concealed on Jacob, ready for them to use when the opportunity presented itself. The scene from the trailer that I mentioned in theory number one, of Jacob encountering Queenie while wielding his wand, could also have been interpreted as him getting ready to throw the wand to Newt or another wizard. Theory number four, the wand is of great value and Dumbledore is using Jacob to hide it in plain sight. One final thought I have to answer the question of why Jacob would have a wand is that perhaps it is actually a very important wand, one that Dumbledore wishes to hide somewhere Grindelwald wouldn't think to look for it. After all, a powerful wizard like Grindelwald, who so believed in the superiority of pure-blooded wizards and their domination over humanity, would hardly think to look for something of importance in the possession of a muggle. He would never think to entrust something of great value to someone without magic, so he might not be able to conceive that anyone else could either. Which brings us to one more question. If the wand is in fact a real wand, who does it belong to? You may remember that the wand chooses the wizard, as the wand maker Ollivander so gravely told Harry Potter before he entered his first year at Hogwarts. I suppose the wand given to Jacob could be some random, unclaimed wand that has yet to choose its master, one which Dumbledore has borrowed from the wand maker's shop. Of course, if the wand is a fake and more of a prop to help Jacob blend in as we discussed in theory number two, then it wouldn't have an owner. But for theory number four, if the wand is an important one, who could it belong to that would make it a wand of great value? We know from the Harry Potter series and supporting materials, such as illustrations from the tales of Beedle the Bard, that this wand is not the Elder Wand, as that exceptional wand was quite unassuming in appearance, made of elderwood with a core of thestral hair. Also, in the Secrets of Dumbledore trailer, it would appear that Grindelwald is in possession of a wand that closely resembles the Elder Wand as depicted in the Harry Potter films. The wand given to Jacob, on the other hand, neither matches the description of the Elder Wand in the books, nor the appearance of it as presented in the Harry Potter films. So, whose wand could this be if it were an important one? Could it be that it's Grindelwald's original wand before he got his hands on the Elder Wand? I suppose we'll have to wait for the film to release in the spring to find out the answer. And with that, we've made it to the end of this video. What do you think? Why has Jacob been given a wand? Whose wand could it be? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, imperfect understanding is often more dangerous than ignorance.